and welcome to the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. Dick Enberg along with Billy Packer. We're about to see a great intersectional game today. UCLA, 15 and 2 from the far west against Tennessee's Volunteers. They're 14 and 2 on the year and unbeaten in Southeastern Conference play. And Billy, we're going to see some outstanding individual talent as well. Well, we will. These are two very great basketball teams. It seems like the country is really getting ready for the finals. It's going to be right here and we'll see today, I think, some of the best players in the country, particularly at the forward position. In fact, you may not see four better college forwards in a single game all season than you'll witness today. Here are one of the pairs. Well, you're going to see Bernard King, a guy whose statistics are almost unbelievable. A super player was out earlier in the year. A guy who's going to be very important to Tennessee in any big game. And the guy right next to him there, David Greenwood, we saw last week, certainly to be a, an All-American at UCLA, very talented and exceptional young player. Both men will be counted upon to clean the boards. We'll watch how well they do in rebounding. And here's another pair. Well, here we have Ernie Grunfeld, uh, just a great player. He played in the Olympics. He's an outstanding all-around talent, a very muscular player, outstanding shooter. And the, the guy beside him may be the most gifted ball player in the United States right now, Marcus Johnson. He just is a great player. We saw him last year, carry his, uh, last week, carry his club to that big win over Notre Dame, and he can do it all. Ernie Grunfeld is the first Tennessee volunteer to ever score more than 2,000 points. If Marcus Johnson scores 26 points today, he will become the all-time leading scorer at a forward position in UCLA history. And you know how many men uh, that includes outstanding players in the past. These two teams well could be featured again here on NBC in March in the national tournament. We get a preview this afternoon. You it's a sellout at the Omni, over 16,000 fans. And now the introduction of the starting lineups. Here's Phil Schaefer. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the starting lineups for today's game. First, the visiting Bruins of UCLA. Starting at guard, 5'11", senior, from Palos Verdes Estates, California, number 44, Jim Spillane. Starting at guard, a 6'2", sophomore, from Los Angeles, California, number 24, Roy Hamilton. Starting at center, a six foot nine freshman from Redondo Beach, California, number 31, Gig Sims. Starting at forward, a six foot nine sophomore from Los Angeles, California, number 34, David Greenwood. And starting at forward, six foot seven senior from Los Angeles, California, number 54, Marcus Johnson. The head coach of the Bruins is Gene Bartow. And now, let's greet the Vols of Tennessee. At guard, 5'10 sophomore from Springfield, Tennessee, number 24, Johnny Gardner. At guard, 6'3 senior from Nashville, Tennessee, number 25, Mike Jackson. At center, six foot nine freshman from Ellenwood, Georgia, number 32, Reggie Johnson. Starting at forward, six foot seven junior from Brooklyn, New York, number 53, Bernard King. And starting at forward, six foot six senior from Forest Hills, New York, number 22, Ernie Grunfeld. And the head coach of the Volunteers, Ray Mears. Little doubt, it's a partisan Tennessee crowd, and we'll be back with the opening tip-off in just a moment. Blacks and the American Revolution. In 1783, Savannah, Georgia became the home of the first Negro Baptist Church. Although tiny and bare, the church symbolized a tremendous source of hope faith, and strength to a bondaged people. The founders of the church were two ex-slaves, George Lyle and Andrew Bryan. In the face of fierce opposition from whites, both men dedicated themselves to preach the gospel. Despite continued harassment and abuse, Bryan chose to remain in the colony, and in 1783 was certified minister of the Ethiopian Church of Jesus Christ. But Lyle, fearing for his life, fled to Jamaica, where for two years he worked as an indentured servant. 
Later, he resumed preaching and founded the island's only Baptist church, where nearly 500 Jamaicans were baptized. UCLA in Tennessee, and we're blessed with two of the game's finest officials, Dale Kelly from the Southeastern Conference, the referee, and from the Pacific Gate and WAC Conference, Irv Brown, the umpire. The Volunteers against the Bruins. Dick, you mentioned the crowd being far from Tennessee crowd. I think in a game like this, you're looking for edges for one team or the other. And I think the travel arrangements that UCLA had to make to get here, having played a tough ball game the other night and then having to fly in here, they practiced last night at about 11 o'clock. So when you're looking for slight edges, I'd have to say that the travel arrangements would definitely favor the Tennessee club along with the crowd. All right, the Volunteers in white with orange trim, the Bruins in blue with gold trim. Big Sims against Bernard King, or against Reggie Johnson, and it is controlled by Sims. The lane to Hamilton. Hamilton has played well the last three games as a starter and was one of the feature performers last week against Notre Dame. The lane. Greenwood open inside against King and hit. Out of bounds to UCLA. It went off King as he and Grunfeld battled for the ball. Everybody knows about the Tennessee zone. It's something they love to play. Very interestingly, they started out man to man, and you had Ernie Grunfeld on Marcus Johnson. There's Johnson alone underneath and scores as he went over the youngster Johnson. They'll right, mix up an assignment by Tennessee. They went to a half court zone trap and nobody realized it. Johnson wide open. Mike Jackson averaging 17 a game. No basket, but a foul on Roy Hamilton of UCLA. Jackson will go to the line and he is the top free throw shooter in the Southeastern Conference. He's missed only eight of 63 tries. And he's averaging 17.6 points per game. But Tennessee, after uh, made free throws, they love to go into some form of zone pressure, whether it be full half or three quarters. Little pressure on Jackson, an outstanding free throw shooter, 87%, but he was way short on that first fire. Two to one, UCLA leads were just underway from the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. There's your press, and there's Ernie Grunfeld, almost. Hamilton had trouble handling the ball off to Johnson, and UCLA leads four to one. Hamilton did a little dance on his fingertips with the ball before he could feed it off to his big forward. UCLA counters with a little zone pressure. Inside to the great Bernard King. Jackson, blocked by Greenwood, controlled by Spillane, two on one with Hamilton. That's Hamilton inside to score. Six to one, UCLA. Well, they don't appear to be tired off the opening bell. They're playing very well. A full court zone press is something that the UCLA uses for many times. They used it well against Notre Dame last week. This is the point guard, sophomore Johnny Darden, a starter at point guard last year as a freshman, first time ever. A freshman has won that honor. He's open. Followed in. Stuffed it to make it 6-3. Two minutes gone. Now here you have Tennessee back into their zone. Two three type zone. Very interesting and intricate type defense. Straight back. Marcus Johnson ripped it home. And Johnson has six points. It's eight to three UCLA. Open is King over Greenwood. Eight to five. End to end action in the early minutes here in Atlanta. King has his first bucket. Tennessee, the highest scoring team in the SEC. And UCLA likes to run and shoot as well. We may have a game, the winner up in the 90s. Here's the fourth defense that Tennessee has used so far. 1-3-1 one, one defense with Ernie Grunfield running the baseline. The lane can't hit. Ernie Grunfeld with a rebound. Open is King. Blocked by Greenwood. David Greenwood with a block from behind. Big Sam had trouble. Where's it just playing? Hamilton from 16, and it's 10 to 5. The Tennessee Partisans thought there was a foul at the other end. Jackson is open, and hit him stem. The freshman, 6'9, rebounds for UCLA. Bruins lead by five. We play just three minutes. 
Anytime you play a team that changes defense, is a lot. One of the best things to do is to get the ball down court quickly. UCLA does that as well as anybody in the country with Hamilton in the backcourt. Watch Grunfeld working on Marcus Johnson, but Johnson is free, and he can't score, but was fouled. Reaching in, both Grunfeld and King raised their hands. We'll see against whom the foul was called. That was Tennessee. Well, it's quite a tingle of excitement for all of us associated with NBC when we heard the news today that NBC has reached an agreement with the organizing committee and Soviet television for the exclusive United States rights to the 1980 Moscow Summer Olympic Games. The formal contract will be signed shortly. Marcus Johnson makes it 11 to 5. Johnson was seven points already. You saw him take charge in the big win last Sunday at Notre Dame. 12 to 5, the Bruins lead. We play three minutes and 20 seconds. Different type of zone press that time. One, two, two. Tennessee does very well against goaltending against Marcus Johnson of the Bruins. Credit the basket to Mike Jackson. Johnny Darden does a good job seeing the defense. And I'll tell you, Bernard King can do it all. Fine pass over there. Jackson goes up. Goaltending on Marcus Johnson. Good call. UCLA lead is five. Sims, the center comes way outside. Greenwood. Roy Hamilton, his teammate in high school, and Hamilton takes the assist from Greenwood and scores his six points. Right back come the Volunteers. Greenwood bats it out, but it goes to Johnson. He's short, and Marcus Johnson rebounds. Here come the Bruins, one-on-one. -on -one. Hamilton against Darton, and he scores again. Roy Hamilton has hit eight points for UCLA, and it's a nine-point Bruin lead. Just four minutes gone. Hectic action in the early going. David Greenwood on Bernard King is really trying to shadow him. It's making it easier for Darden and the other players. Darden used too many moves and traveled. It'll be the Bruins' ball on the side in front of their coach. Gene Bartow is looking for his 50th win as the head man at UCLA, replacing John Wooden. Anytime you try to face guard a great player by Bernard King who can create things for other teammates, you should have some openings. Spillane can't hit him. Look at that King field away the Bruins as he gets the rebound. Mike Jackson will pop from 20. He is 16 to 9 as Jackson takes the long pass from King. Four and a half minutes gone. Here's that 2-3. They're matching up now out of a 2-3 defense. I'll tell you, Tennessee plays as many different combinations of defense as you'll see in the country. Hamilton inside to Greenwood. He spins for a 10-footer and hits. David Greenwood, the brilliant sophomore, has his first bucket. It's 18-9, UCLA, and now the press by the Bruins. He's beaten rather easily by Tennessee, but now an interception by Hamilton. The lane is the man who seems most open in that Tennessee zone defense. Now it's Sims from 18, and the freshman hit. Boy, the Bruins red hot in cold Atlanta, Georgia. 20 to 9 to score. And there's UCLA zone press. They're really shielding over here on Grunfeld's side. Jimmy Jackson is shot so far he's been able to make it. And Jackson, given plenty of time, hits from the side again. He has seven of Tennessee's 11 points. UCLA really trying to look out for Bernard King and Ernie Grunfeld on their zone press, leaving Jackson wide open. But when he can make them, it makes that uh, press not very valuable. Belaine can't hit. Marcus Johnson with a rebound and was fouled trying to go up. We'll uh, see whether they rule Johnson was trying to score. And we'll wait for the crowd to quiet and get the official word. Bernard King fouled his second. A non-shooting violation, and Johnson will trigger it in. Sims right back to Johnson. Greenwood from outside. 20 footer by Greenwood. Four points for him. 22 to 11. UCLA leads by 11. Ray Mears off the bench for Tennessee shouting at his players. And come on, let's get into some kind of pattern. Thus far, it seems that UCLA, Billy, has gotten into their offense a little better than Tennessee. Well, I think so. And one of the things UCLA is doing is bring the ball down for its goal. Grunfeld going to the iron is fouled by Greenwood. Big Ernie Grunfeld, member of the U.S. Olympic team. Watch this reverse dribble up. Good move by Grunfeld. He goes inside, and I'll tell you, as powerful as he is, he's almost impossible to stop when he gets that close to the hoop. 
Rumfeld from Forest Hills, New York, a 6'6 senior, as you know, born in Romania, naturalized United States citizen. He was used by Dean Smith on the U.S. Olympic team primarily as a defensive forward. In his fourth year at Tennessee, he's already all SEC first team his first three years and seems to seems to make it a sweep all four years at Knoxville. You know, as strong a tradition as Tennessee has had in basketball, for Ray Mears to make the comment the two greatest players that he's ever had are both on this same club shows you how much talent both of them have. Ramfell cuts the Bruin lead to 10 points, and he's looking for his second point of the game. Good free throw shooter over 80%. Tennessee traditionally has always been a good free throw shooting team under Ray Mears. Here they have an opportunity to go into their press, and they'll try to trap right after they get over half court. Good job that time. Okay. Hamilton driving and a blocking foul on Tennessee. Great job by Roy Hamilton beating the press. I think he recognized they were going to try to trap him, but watch him. He hesitates a little bit, penetrates between two, and now the press is all over because Hamilton's inside three on one. Foul on Reggie Johnson. Foul on Reggie Johnson of Tennessee. Sends Hamilton to the line. He scored 22, 16, and 14 as a starter replacing Raymond Townsend. Townsend, the junior guard for UCLA, is out of the hospital and has begun light workouts with the Bruins. He misses both, and Johnson picks off the rebound. Here come the volunteers. They trail by nine. Runfeld, great one-on-one -on -one player. Of course, a tough shot. The lane breaks out. Three on two to Greenwood. And Runfeld forces a turnover. Hey, hey, Good play by Ernie Grunfeld. It appeared Greenwood was on his way to a slam. You know, Dick, very interesting, too. Uh, it was a great play by Greenwood and Marcus Johnson switching off on Grunfeld that last defensive assignment. Greenwood right now doing a good job keeping the ball away from Bernard King. Garden, who shoots rarely, but he'll pass off. Johnson missed an easy chance. Beautiful feed by Johnny Dart. Greenwood hits again. UCLA blazing hot from the field, and the Bruins lead by 24-13. Six points now for Greenwood. Seven minutes played in the first half. Spillane gets it to Sims, another turnover. Johnson breaks out. He'll slow it up and wait for help. Again, the zone defense by Tennessee. Johnson can't hit. Greenwood rebounds underneath. He can't score. King rebounds ahead to Dart. This is Jackson. Mike Jackson fouls Spillane of UCLA. I think it might be interesting to see if Ray Mears just tries to junk the press and say, let's get back and set up something solid on the defensive end and not change so much because UCLA is just beating them back down the floor. While you're trying to change your defensive assignments, you just can't be prepared. You saw a look at Ray Mears, who is the winningest, has the best winning percentage of any active coach in the NCAA. At the line, Mike Jackson, a senior from Nashville. 24-14, Jackson. The leading volunteer score has eight points. He's averaging just under 18 points a game. 24-15. Tennessee drills by nine. Here's a little different press. They're going to try to trap after the ball gets over half court. They don't get a chance because Roy Hamilton's just handling that ball so well. Inside to Johnson. That's Reggie Johnson against him. And Marcus beats Reggie. It's 26-15. 10 points for Marcus Johnson. Marcus Johnson, by the way, has passed Walt Hazard. He's now one of the top scorers all time. UCLA history stolen by Hamilton to Spillane and a foul on Grunfield. Grunfield reaching up from a sitting position picked up the foul. His first. Good music provided by the Tennessee Volunteer Big Orange Fan. High scoring game. We've played just nine minutes, and UCLA leads Tennessee 26 15. And Billy Janelle will pick our select track two most valuable player of the game scholarship award sometime late in this one. And there's a lot of talent from which to choose. And here you see Tennessee going straight man to man, something that they don't do often. Good switch that time by King. Greenwood hits again. I don't think he's missed a shot. Four for four for David Greenwood. 28-15, that's UCLA's biggest lead. Garden all the way, blocked by Greenwood. 
Jackson controls to Tennessee. Brumfield from 22. Not there. Rebound, Marcus Johnson. He's averaging 11 boards a game. Tennessee has to find some defense as a stopper. They're going to try to do it with a man-to-man. -man. Roy Hamilton can't hit, and Reggie Johnson has the rebound for Tennessee. Starts inside the Bernard King. Nice move! King shot that one right from the hip. 17 and four. Speed by Johnny Gardner on the inside. First time King's been able to handle it in the area he loves to hold the ball. 11 minutes remaining in the first half. UCLA by 11 points. UCLA back. Uh, thinking it's going to be man to man. Tennessee back in the 2 3 zone again. Greenwood can't hit. Sims can't connect. And King holds down the rebound. He's a great rebounder, averaging nearly 15 a game. Run foul. Belaine battling with a taller Jackson, and Jackson gets the foul. Belaine is five inches shorter, but as we told you last week, a great leaper. He has high jump, 6'6". Six, six. You know what? I'm very interested to watch Bernard King play because it's interesting to watch how he gets these statistics rebounding-wise. If you're watching, he's one of the best block-out men that I've seen in a long time. Greenwood can connect. Marcus Johnson gets the rebound and powers his way up for a score. He went between two volunteers to pick up his 12th point of the game. Approaching the midpoint of the first 20-minute period. King off the Grunfeld. Oh, my God. Boy, he shows an acceleration. Ernie Grunfeld takes it 30 to 19. He has four. And put his body between the defensive man and that pass. It's just a beautiful layup. Marcus Johnson gets it in. UCLA shooting percentage has been incredibly high this first half. Johnson with 14 points. Grunfeld going to go all the way. Got the easy hoop. Gunfell now with two in a row has six in the game. And with Tennessee getting a chance to score a little bit, it gives them an opportunity to go back and set up defensively. They're getting out of the press and going back to a standard defense. Well, these volunteer fans making a lot of noise in support of Tennessee. Hamilton, tough shot. Greenwood. Scores, all cut by David Greenwood. He has 10 points. It's 34 to 21. Nine minutes plus remaining. UCLA is still man to man out there. Doing a real good job with their defense, too. Mike Jackson can't hit. Look at that Johnson rip off the rebound. The lane ahead to Hamilton, one on one. No one underneath for UCLA, but they didn't need anyone. Roy Hamilton has 10. Three Bruins already in double figures, and we have eight and a half minutes remaining in the first half. <laughs> Bernard King scores to make it 36 23. You can see why Johnny Garden's the first guy ever to start a point guard for Tennessee. He's got eyes any place he needs them. Timeout, UCLA, with 8.21 remaining in the first half. UCLA probably its hottest shooting first half, leads by 13. Back in Atlanta's Omni, here's Ernie Grenville adding to his all-time Tennessee scoring record. Well, here's a good give-and-go situation from 30 feet from the basket. Now, David Greenwood doesn't believe that Grunfield is going to get there that quickly. Therefore, defensively, he didn't establish position. And I'll tell you, just because Grunfield has the big legs doesn't mean he doesn't have good quick. UCLA with the ball, leads by 13 points. Eight minutes, 15 seconds left. Hamilton can't get inside on Jackson. Greenwood to Hamilton. Great man-to-man, -man. Grunfeld Johnson. What a battle inside. It's great to watch those two guys. The UCLA going with its five starters throughout. No substitutions to get. Marcus Johnson over Grunfeld. Can't hit. Greenwood flies into the rebound. Inside, Gig Sims with a semi-hook. He's two for two, four points for Sims. A 15-point UCLA lead. But I'll just predict, Billy, it's going to be a lot closer than that before this one's over. Well, I think this is the final game as I've seen UCLA play in a long time. Grunfeld hits again. He has eight points. He's taking charge for Tennessee. 
Tennessee is going straight man to man for a while. They've got to find a way to stop UCLA because so far UCLA is just playing a super game offense. Greenwood against King. Back to Spillane. Great job by Darden helping out on the double. There is one of the few turnovers and maybe the first turnover by UCLA in this half. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Seven minutes left in the half. Bernard King can't hit. Greenwood on a tip from Spillane. Hamilton going down court, and he doesn't need anyone again. I can't believe they're not challenging Roy Hamilton. Johnny Darden letting him take the outside shot, but there's nobody behind you. You can go up and play the man with the ball. A good set play by Tennessee last time, Dick, and they got off an easy shot even though King didn't hit it. There's Grunfeld again. Hits again. Ernie Grunfeld has 10 points to lead Tennessee at 40 to 27. UCLA's lead cuts to 13. Six and a half minutes remaining before the intermission. Good double screen down low. Grunfeld's going to have a hard time staying with Johnson with that particular offensive move. Inside Greenwood, double team. Can't get it away. Here comes Garden. Garden ahead to King. And Greenwood rebound. Foul over the back. Was it Jackson or Johnson? I think it's going to be Mike Jackson over the back. Uh, Great block out that time by David Greenwood. He's having one of the best games of anybody we've seen this year. Here we'll see it right here. Grunfeld scoring. You know, sometimes when you see that, Dick, a bank shot from straight out, you'd like to run down and ask Ernie, did you try to do that and <laughs> get away from you? You don't, you don't usually try to bank him in from the top of the key right away. Brett Roman is in the game for the first time for UCLA. Marcus Johnson way short, and the rebound goes to Johnson. This is Darden. Great pass to Jackson. Another fine pass. Grunfeld cannot score, but was fouled by Greenwood. Greenwood over the top. That'll send Ernie Grunfeld to the line. He looks like a linebacker, doesn't he? Look at this beautiful pass by Darden. Left hand all the way. Jackson hits inside. If you don't have a good shot, give it to a guy with a better one. Grunfeld inside. And he's really cute. Look at that expression on his face, Dick. What a competitor this guy is. He thought he had a shot at a three-point play. Grunfield with a dozen, with ten points, looking for a dozen. Great form. Look at how he uses his whole body in shooting the free throw. I think there's a guy by the name of Joe Hall at Kentucky tell you a little about free throws by Tennessee. They're still complaining about what happened a couple of years ago. This is Kiki Vandaway, a 6'7 freshman, number 55, coming in for UCLA. He's the son of the former All-American Ernie Vandaway, who played his college ball at Colgate. Grunfeld hits two, and it's 40 to 29. Now the press on UCLA after the main free throw. But it's man-to-man -man press. Dick. You can see that they want to get away from those tricky-type defenses and go to something that's solid. I think a real good move by Ray Mir. Eleven point UCLA lead. Ooh, almost a turnover. Band away inside to Johnson and a whistle before the shot. And Johnson put on a little eel like move just in case. Now you have a real problem because Johnson with this particular offense is getting open and getting the ball, making it uh, tough for any Grunfeld to get position. That's gonna be what, his second or third? Grunfeld has his second foul. That makes, makes it, it, excuse me, Dick, that makes it real tough for Ramirez because you, you want to have a guy like Grunfeld on Marcus Johnson, but you can't afford to have him pick up his third when he's leading an offense also. Johnson misses, and a foul on Roman over the top. Brett Roman fouls. Dean Bartow saw a possible two points disappear and saw his big seven-foot center Roland pick up his first penalty. Ramirez, 49 years of age, great Success at Wittenberg, where he won the NCAA College Division Championship before going to Tennessee. This is his 14th year, and Paul Fifth, his best team ever. Look for that double screen and low for Bernard King. Rundell, Dunn King, 40 to 31. That was the same offense as set up, and that time King pulled out instead of using the double screen, and Rundell beautifully slipped into the left. Rundell made ball scores at 14. Marcus Johnson, Grunfield cut him off. This crowd giving Tennessee plenty of support. Roman 
Oh, my. Two lucky bouncers. And then the soft little fall into the net for Roman. Jackson maneuvers inside. Blocked by Roman, but he gets it back in four. Tip in, right in. So Johnson, Reggie Johnson, got the tap, and it's 42-33. UCLA may have to have a timeout shortly to calm things down a little bit. The crowd and the tempo of the game is definitely changing. UCLA's lead wants a 15 points and held it to nine. Belaine from the side. Can't hit it. Roman bats it in with a left hand. Brett Roman, who made that great block last week at Notre Dame, that may have been the most important single play in the game, hammers one in. Four minutes left in the half. 44-33 the score. UCLA in its zone right now for the first time. It took Tennessee a little bit of time to recognize it. Mike Jackson can't hit. Bandaway rebounds for UCLA. And Roy Hamilton connects again. He has 14 points. He's near his all-time high as a run. Here goes UCLA back in the zone. Real smart move by Gene Marshall right here. He can feel the game getting away from him a little bit. He changes defenses, makes Tennessee slow, slow things down. Bernard King coming outside. This is Darden. King from 17. Not there, Vandaway, another rebound. Hamilton on the break. It's Belane, 20-footer. Rebound. Goes to Jackson with three minutes left in the first half. King. Oh, beautiful feed from Jackson. And what a catch. You know, the great players have those gifted hands to be able to catch a ball. That was a super catch. That's six points in football. Fingertips, guys. <laughs> Hamilton leaving inside the score. He is unbelievably hot. 16 for Hamilton. Hamilton's all-time high is 23. Timeout. Tennessee, as UCLA will make three substitutions. Two minutes, 40 seconds remaining in an exciting first half, high-scoring half, and the Bruins lead by 13 over Tennessee. It's extremely important to watch out for a big star, but here you can see Ernie Grunfield so concerned about Marcus Johnson, he screens off his own man, Mike Jackson, and... I'll tell you, somebody better decide in a hurry that Roy Hamilton is scoring because nobody has stopped him yet today. They don't even seem to be concerned about him, but he's doing a great job. Hamilton has some new cohorts. Brad Holland in the game for the first time, number 14. And James Wolfe, number 35, in for the first time. 48 to 37. As Arden has his first hoop of the game. Two minutes, 20 seconds, remaining in the first half. Brad Holland to Greenwood. Greenwood, can't hit, yes he did. Fell through, all right, UCLA, even when they hit iron, the ball bounces straight up and falls in. Half a hundred points for UCLA, with two minutes left in the half. Darden has great penetrating ability against the zone, and any time he can get inside there and make the dish with those quick hands, you know Tennessee's going to have a, a man to score. Look at that. Darden, two in a row for the little guard. He's only 5'10". Great playmaker. Doesn't like to shoot, but he has the opening. They're ignoring him, Dick, because he'd like to penetrate, and when they ignore him, he has that ability to hit from outside. And now he's on Hamilton, and you can watch for a good matchup there. Wilkes, just a freshman from Los Angeles. Holland is sophomore. Another Southern California rebound. Reggie Johnson. Here come the volunteers. Bernard King to Brunfeld. Back to King. He dishes off to Johnson. Oh, tough break. Out of bounds to UCLA. And the fans don't like that call a bit. That was a good call because we see this pass right here. What a super pass inside. Brilliant. There goes Johnson up. Now you'll see where Roman had control, but the ball was knocked out by Johnson. Good call. Approaching the one-minute mark, Spillane back in the game for UCLA. Holland to Broman, 15-footer for the big center, followed in by Marcus Johnson. Johnson now has 16. We're in the final minute of the first half. UCLA holding that 13-point lead. Johnson intercepts. Holland straight down court. Spillane the open man. Rebound. Johnson bats it ahead. Darden has it for Tennessee. 
Brunfeld. Beautiful. Super teamwork right there. Hit the open man, and Tennessee shows why they're a top club. Look at a good head fake. Brunfield throws it on inside. Just a brilliant play. Good teamwork. And that's a big foul on David Greenwood. His third foul with less than a minute remaining in the first half. Greenwood will come out of the game as Gene Bartow attempts to protect his big board from picking up that fourth foul. And the end of the game, returning is Kiki Vandaway, the freshman. At the line, Bernard King, he's the leading scorer for Tennessee, averaging just under 25 a game. Good time now for UCLA to try to sit on this ball a little bit and hang on to it. They got the lead by coming down and taking good shots, but they now have to sit on it. Charging foul on Holland as Mike Jackson had position on Brad Holland. So with 30 seconds left, Tennessee has a chance to score five quick points in this final minute. That's a very uh, tough play for UCLA, but super defense by Tennessee. Brad Holland has no place to go, but just give it up and relax. And there's the foul right there. Good call by the ref, and not too smart a play by UCLA. Tennessee will go for the final shot. 19 seconds left in the first half. Tennessee trailing by 10, but they were behind by as much as 15 in this first half. 10 seconds left. Look out for Bernard King. I'm sure they'd like to get the ball to him. Jackson loses for a moment. Grunfeld can't hit it. One second and the buzzer. Grunfeld just missed a 20-footer. The end of a very offensive-minded first half on both sides. At the intermission, it's the UCLA Bruins 52, the Tennessee Volunteers 42. In the We're All Getting Older department, it's been more than 20 years since Bill Russell led the University of San Francisco through two straight unbeaten seasons, a total of 60 games and two NCAA championships. In the interim, the Dons really surfaced among the top college teams. But this year, San Francisco sits atop the ratings and has yet to lose to another college five. Barbara Hunter reports. A lot of folks are wondering whether the Dons can put together that elusive thing, the unbeaten season. The USF basketball team is enjoying its prestige as the only unbeaten major college in the country. And Coach Bob Gaylord readily admits that being on top of the heap is a lot of fun. We're very happy that, that people are coming out now and, and trying to do a lot of uh, in-depth interviews and stories on the team. And we're really happy about it. Uh, a lot of times when we leave messages now, they're answered promptly. And phone calls uh, are taken with a lot more respect. It's great. Bob, last year you had a team that a lot of people thought would be one of the top teams in the country. It was a little bit of a disappointment. What was the catalyst that turned it around this year for you? I think the added maturity of the three freshmen who were the nucleus of last year's team. And they've had a year to make the transition. They are very secure now in that they feel they have proven themselves. And now we've gone about the task of winning basketball games. They have learned to trust each other more instead of trying to do it all by themselves. What's the difference between last year and this year, except perhaps the year of maturity? Our nucleus last year was freshman. Anytime you start three people right out of the high school ranks, I think it's a very difficult transition. College basketball is a very difficult test for anyone, especially when you're dealing with 17, 18-year-old kids. Now our nucleus is sophomores. Bill Carwright, first of all, is approaching seven foot, and he has had a tremendous year so far. He's put on 20 pounds. He's always been a great shooter. But now with the added strength, he has the ability to go to the basket, and he's really making his presence known inside. James Hardy at one forward spot. He's exceptionally quick, great jumping ability. He is our leading rebounder. He's a perfectionist. He's an, he's an artist. He wants to do everything just exactly right. Winford Boynes moved to backcourt this year, still is considered a swing man. He plays a lot of forward for us. He's 6'6", has the ability to go up front or in the backcourt was the Northern Cal Player of the Year and our leading scorer last year. An interesting thing's happened to your team. It's not always a good thing. You're on the cover of Sports Illustrated, which has just come out today. Do you have any uncomfortable feelings about the old stigma regarding being on the cover of SI? Not really. I think it's great. Uh, we're proud to be there. Of course, if anything goes wrong from now on, it's certainly not my fault. No, you can always blame SI. No, all, uh, all cards and letters addressed to you are very much at Sports Illustrated. You know, I guess you can't help but compare this team to the Russell-dominated team 20 years ago. And I think this may be a better team all around. 
Russell and, and KC really were the team 20 years ago. Well, I think this team has more depth. And, you know, we don't mean to say that SI is going to make them lose or that we're wishing them to lose, except for I am reminded of something a lot of college coaches have told me at the beginning of this year, that they do not believe any team will go undefeated. So if, uh, if you're Bob Gayard, you almost hope that you, that you lose it before you hit the NC2As. Yeah, because you only get one loss there, and you are then out of business. We're at halftime at the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. The UCLA Bruins leading Tennessee 52 to 42. Obviously, two of the top teams in the nation. UCLA, a, a team, they shot over 60% that first half. They'd have to maintain that kind of torrid uh, field goal percentage. Uh, they would win, but I, I don't think any team can keep that up. Well, I don't think so because I think Tennessee's going to do some things differently in the second half, Dick. I think uh, UCLA came out and surprised them by beating them down the court, taking jumpers from the outside. They hit them. Uh, they're capable of doing that all the time. I think Tennessee will try to cut off some of that quick transition play by UCLA in the second half. But it was a great shooting performance, and I think a very exciting first half. Well, we talked about the forwards at the start of the game, Grunfield and King of Tennessee and Johnson and Greenwood of UCLA, and they pretty well battled to a standstill. I think if you add up the points, it'd be very close. The key to UCLA success in the first half was little Roy Hamilton, the guard. Nobody cut him off, and I don't think they expected Hamilton. I, you know, since he's uh, become a starter, he's a lot more positive as a player, and I think that's the thing that's been a difference out here, both in the Notre Dame game and this one. He comes down the court as a real field general, and that's the thing that makes UCLA so tough. Alan, something to look forward to in the second half. You know, these Tennessee fans cheering on the volunteers. They didn't have one really good run at UCLA. If they get hot and score three or four in a row, we're, we're in for a gangbuster. I think it's going to be that way anyway, Dick. Uh, two really super clubs. And you know, maybe in March we'll see these same two back here again because they have that kind of potential. Indeed, and we're ready for the second half, and we'll have the final 20 minutes of action from the Omni in Atlanta right after we pause for this word. Those are the first half statistics from Atlanta. UCLA outscoring Tennessee 52-42. Billy, uh, the Bruins were as hot as we thought. Yes, they were 60%, and there weren't any easy ones out there. Most of those from long range or turnaround jump shot variety, which are tough to make. And UCLA getting eight more field goals, while Tennessee had eight free throws successfully, and UCLA only two. Interesting in the rebounds, uh, Tennessee leading by one. UCLA was out-rebounded by nearly 20 by Notre Dame last Sunday, so they've improved in that statistic. Set to go, second half. Tennessee trailing by 10. It'll be Brett Broman, Marcus Johnson, David Greenwood. Big front line for UCLA with Marcus Johnson and Jimmy Spillane. Johnson, King, Grunfeld, Jackson, and Darden for Tennessee, and the Volunteers get the tip off. I think I almost uh, thought that would meet automatically a zone defense by UCLA, but they came out second half man to man again. Reggie Johnson lost the ball underneath. It appeared he had an easy follow-up on King's shot. The lane to Marcus Johnson. We'll give you the individual scoring when we have a moment. They're going to lay off Roman out there. That means double team on Johnson inside because King's going to help out. The lane. Fails to score. He is looking for his position. Downfield, Dom Port, Jackson, and he was fouled before the shot by Jimmy Spillane. Might have been a good foul because Jackson had an easy layup and a good time for Spillane to try to make a steal or go ahead, give it away. It is Spillane's second steal, or second foul. Here it is again. And that was a great block out by Grunfeld and King. And there you see, you go ahead and take a chance for the steal. If you don't get the steal, you get a foul. The guy doesn't get the layup. So it's smart play. Grunfeld is fouled by Marcus Johnson. Both Johnson and Broman trying to stop the All-America Grunfeld and could not. And that'll send Ernie to the line where he is outstanding. Grunfeld in the first half scored 14 to lead Tennessee. King had 11. Johnson was 16. Hamilton was 16. And Greenland with 12, leading the Bruins. And we saw Tennessee in the first half go to different types of zone pressures on a full-court basis after free throws. I'll be interested to see if they try to stay with that in the second half because they've been much more effective when they drop straight back into a defensive set. That's the first point of the second half, and Tennessee trails by nine. And you can see, Dick, they fall off the press completely. They drop straight back into a defense that is set in pattern. Roman to David Greenwood. He hits the turnaround 12-footer. Greenwood has 14. The biggest lead of the game, 15 points. UCLA enjoyed that margin three times in the first half. Mike Jackson comes in home. Jackson, the senior, has 11. But in that wing spot, he is so deadly with the jumper. Foul on Tennessee. 
couple of the volunteers uh, volunteering their efforts and trying to get to that pumpkin. Johnson gets the foul. Green Bartow is going to have to make some kind of decision here. Tennessee is not guarding Broman at all, which means that King can go either way on Greenwood or Johnson. Red Johnson has a foul. Who's going to be the foul here? Will it be Greenwood or will it be a block called against Jackson? It'll be against David Greenwood of UCLA, and that is his fourth foul. This is a brilliant piece of coaching right here. This is something Tennessee loves to do is to set the screen on a man defensively. Uh, just a very smart play. David Greenwood didn't see it and picked up what could be an extremely important foul. So a freshman, Kiki Vandaway, comes in to replace Greenwood with a minute and four seconds gone in the second half. David Greenwood goes to the bench for UCLA. We'll mark that time and see how important it is in the final outcome. Well, we're very excited here at NBC, as you've heard by now. NBC will be televising the 1980 Summer Olympic Games from Moscow, Russia. That was uh, developed today, a development today, and NBC will sign the formal contract very soon. Stick, the reason they're jumping it up is a false double foul, a dead ball foul situation right there. So it's Greenwood's fourth. They'll jump the ball at the center. Just uh, We had the same situation in Marquette Notre Dame game a couple of weeks ago. Roman tips to Hamilton. Roy Hamilton brings it in for UCLA. Tennessee trailing UCLA by nine. And away to Hamilton. Johnson and Spillane are seniors. Roman a junior. That's Roman from outside and he hits again. He's showing a soft touch for a big man. And that's the play that UCLA will have to have to keep King on it. Brunfeld, leading score for the Volunteers, gets a pick from King. Back outside, Darden. Balances the floor. King to Brunfeld, reaching in, band away. Here's a big matchup inside. Grunfeld and Johnson. You can see Ernie trying to do everything he can. Now Mark is trying to get position. It fell down right there. No real contact. And Herb Brown said, come on, fellas. Grunfeld hanging out with a leg. Anything to try to win this. Reggie Johnson connects for Tennessee. He has six. And again, UCLA's lead is cut to nine. You can see Tennessee. They're going to want to get this game on a half-court situation. The heck with that transition because UCLA beat them back. You're really packing your defense in tightly. Hamilton to Vandaway around the perimeter. Roman will shoot again. And connect. Grunfeld ahead. Martin to Johnson. Blocked by Roman. Followed in. Bernard King and a super follow-up. And here's that run you were talking about earlier, Dick. Roman. Forcing his shot, Vandaway can't hit. Here come the volunteers, they trail by only seven. Darden off the foot of Jackson, a tough play for Tennessee. Not a good pass that time by Johnny Darden. You can come up with a better one. Here you'll see the play that we had, not the last one, but the one before. Good play by Johnson, and here's Bernard King, super rebounder, puts it back up with the right hand. David Greenwood has come back in for UCLA. Dean Marshall figures he's going to have to go at Greenwood, gambling that he might fall out. Seven-point lead. Jake Sims in the ball game also. Look at how that defense is packed in there as opposed to the way it was in the first half. The lane can't connect as they jump ball. Greenwood will jump it with Bernard King. That'll be an interesting jump, although Greenwood is two inches taller. They both can sky. You know, Dick, here we'll see the play right here. Good blocking out. And that's the thing that makes for a good rebounding club. Jake Sims didn't have Bernard King. He's the guy that snuck in there. Tennessee. It'll be Darden and UCLA's Marcus Johnson. So UCLA gets even more of a height advantage now as Johnson is almost a foot taller than the little Tennessee guard. Dick, one of the things I think UCLA could try to do is... is Try to get Johnson isolated a little more instead of being in so tight. Grunfeld against Spillane. He's fouled. He scores. And listen to this crowd in Atlanta, Georgia. They're on their feet. It's time has been called. And here's something you don't ever want to do 
two, you have a distinct advantage on the jump and you lose it. Now here's Ernie going down inside, good fake, and there's that power. You just can't stop him when he gets so tight. The little man Spillane committed the foul. Timeout, Tennessee roaring back in the second half, trails by only five. Back to the press right now, just trying to camouflage a little bit and make UCLA keep taking. Roy Hamilton driving. Can't get inside on Jackson. Roy's led by 15. Greenwood quiets the crowd as he bangs in another. David Greenwood has 16. Roy Greenwood's really doing the job from way outside. And I mentioned about getting Johnson loose. They're going to have to isolate him on Grunfeld a little bit, trying to get some foul trouble on Grunfeld. He's gone a long time without being tested. Grunfeld from King. King again setting up his partner on Tennessee's forward wall. 20 points for Ernie Grunfeld. We've got ourselves quite a ball game from the Omni, the scene of the NCAA. Championships in late March. Greenwood guns. Oh. It's again a great shooting show by the big men from Tennessee and UCLA. Now what's happening in this UCLA zone defense? Tennessee starting attack much better than they were earlier. Greenwood to Hamilton. Tune in down for Tennessee. Now Hamilton will hold it up. Greenwood's hot. Goes to the boot. He scores. Foul is on Grunfeld. And he doesn't believe it. Ernie was in pretty good position. I'll be anxious to see this one some myself. David Greenwood took an awful chance trying to go all the way, but a super play by this young sophomore. Greenwood has made three in a row to bring UCLA back, and here's that last foul. Good play by Roy Hamilton to give it up. Now, there's the move right there. Yes, I'll tell you what, Irv Brown was right on top of that because Ernie, he shuffled on over after David Greenwood was in the air. Great ball. He took that little half step to his left. Greenwood misses the free throw, however, and it's Tennessee trailing by eight with 15 and a half minutes left. Bernard King from Grunfeld. What a team that is. Now, usually guys with the stats that these two have are very selfish ball players, but these guys give it up beautifully. And still, Marcus Jackson not able to get the ball. Look at the double team help he's getting. Malayne finally hits for UCLA. The Bruins must get some outside punch from the guard. Here comes Darden. Sims can't stop him. Rebound. Score! Bernard King. Boy, he's at home underneath, isn't he? Positioning very well inside, getting a good block out off the offensive board. We've played only five minutes of the second half. That's King Sims. Banks it in. The kid is three for three. <laughs> Stolen by Hamilton, Darden to deep, and he won't stop him. Roy Hamilton has 18, and UCLA back on top by 10. Is that 2-3 defense by UCLA there? They're trying to concentrate a little more on Grunfield now because he's going to manage right. Sims with a rebound, a Jackson shot. Spillane, beautiful pass to Hamilton. He misses one. Look at that Spillane at 5'10 up there fighting for the rebound. Hey, he really died on that particular rebound because it was Bernard King and the man he was going up against and went right over him. Kiki Vandaway, the freshman forward, is in for David Greenwood. Greenwood came back in, settled things with four fouls. He made three buckets, and now he's back resting again. 14 minutes left. Pass underneath, and Johnson ties up Johnson. Marcus and Reggie. Reggie is two inches taller on this leap. Tim, I think that was a great substitution by Gene Barco because he's got the clock in his favor, and now that he built that lead back up again, he can say, okay, we'll stick Greenwood on the bench and see how long we can stay there with it. It's controlled by home. UCLA, Spillane gets the bat in from Jackson. Hamilton, a great feed to Johnson! Marcus Johnson slams it home, but the play was made by the little guard. 18 for Marcus Johnson. He's been quiet the second half. That's King. Oh. Boy, does he get rid of that ball in a hurry. That's impossible to stop that shot. A half-hook jump shot. And a, a shot of the future. I think you're going to see more of that as time goes on, but impossible to stop. 
Yeah, in the old days, Billy, the old days, even 10 years ago, you'd have been fence taking a shot <laughs> like that. Vandaway sets up Sims way off the mark. Here comes Brunsell. Watch his speed, Dick. Very deceiving. To King. Bernard King is hot. He has 20. It's 70 to 62. This is the best end-to-end -end action we've seen all season. 13 minutes left. Vandaway, 20-footer, he hit. Oh, my, they're going to take all the Cupid dolls right out of Atlanta, the way these teams are shooting. And the thing that's amazing is Marcus Johnson can't even get his hands on the ball, and the younger UCLA players are just keep hitting that jump shot from the outside. Gruntel to King, he's got the hot hand. Gruntel from 18. Followed in. Critical play. Mike Jackson got the bucket for Tennessee. He has eight. Bad blockout job by the two UCLA guards in the zone. Marcus Johnson loses the ball, and he's tied up. Dick, here's an interesting example of what it is when a, when a star player like Johnson's being double teamed. He's just not going to have an opportunity to make too many moves inside because Bernard King is really shading to his side wherever he goes. And so Grunfield and King are both guarding Johnson in effect. Both Johnson and King, all Americas, at 6-7, leaping for this one. Tipped out to Vandaway of UCLA. Approaching the 12-minute mark of the second half, UCLA leads by eight. You can watch Bernard King shading inside, trying to help out wherever he can. Johnson over the back of the head to score, and he was fouled. The grace of this giant from UCLA. Oh, are we seeing some outstanding forward play? Johnson now needs only eight points to become the all-time scoring forward in UCLA history. We have a timeout with 12 minutes left in this one, friends. It's the Bruins, 74, the Volunteers, 64. Here you're going to see uh, just excellent play by UCLA and how to break Marcus Johnson open. Now you can see Ernie Grunfeld, he's got a tough decision to make, like go over the top or underneath. Excellent pass at the right time. Bernard King, right about now, is ready to come into the picture too late. And incredibly, to the live action, Johnson missed the free throw, and Reggie Johnson, going for the rebound, knocks it in, and Bernard King tries the over the head, and Reggie Johnson fires, travels, travels. Reggie Johnson, while we were watching the replay, went up for the rebound, and lost control and banked it in. The basket will go to the UCLA player closest to Reggie Johnson at the time. It's now 76-64. UCLA, a big break for the Bruins. Right here, you're going to say, you're going to try to find out down here, Tennessee looks like they don't want that basket to count, but Dick, obviously it has to count. It was, a, it was tapped into the basket. It was done so quietly, I think mean, a lot of fans missed it, too. Give it to Marcus Johnson. Kiki Vandaway misses. Rebound, and a good one by Reggie Johnson. Tennessee trails by a dozen. Bernard King does well. Rebound Jackson. Now Darton will start it over again. There's that two-three zone defense. Tiki Vanaway running all over trying to help out. Good play. Marcus Johnson sets it up to Hamilton. He could have thrown it himself. Again, the unselfish play of the All-America. We've seen it from King and Grenfell of Tennessee, and we see it from Marcus Johnson of UCLA. Tennessee needs a hot hand. Jackson batted away underneath, and Broman gets it for UCLA. Did he throw it away? The lane can't save it. It was on the sideline. Roman trying to set up the fast break for UCLA, but his pass off the sideline. Lee Hunt trying to slow him down a little bit over there. With this kind of lead, you can take a chance, maybe, but they still feel 14 points in a club like Tennessee is not enough. A lot of scoring punch for the Volunteers, who do trail 78-64, with 10 minutes, 50 seconds left. A different offensive uh, pattern set up by Tennessee now, trying to free Grunfeld in the corner to King in the middle. King blocked by Roman, fouled by Roman. He jumped into the shooter, King, and Roman, I believe that is his third. I think it's number two foul on the big seven-footer from Utah, the only non-Californian on the UCLA team. 
Here's King, and uh, he's much too free in the post area right there to let him handle the ball like that. Roman hits him. Good call. Dick is right on the arm, and he probably overpowered him a little bit too much. Bernard King from Brooklyn, New York. King has, of course, an outstanding younger brother, Alfred, back at Fort Hamilton High School that will be heavily recruited by all the top teams in the country. Misses both free throws. Roman rebounds for UCLA. King shot both of those shots off his heels, and that's what took away that little bit of touch that you normally have. Roman slips under the three clock by King. Jump ball. Oh, that King, knowing where the ball was, showing quickness and still the agility, the talent to get his hand on the ball and not the man. See if UCLA taps back now trying to just get control. They never got the ball. King beat him. Long pass for King. Bernard King scores again for Tennessee. That's 22 for King. 78-66 UCLA. We're halfway through the second 20-minute period. Boy, Grunfield doing a super job on Marcus Johnson. Roman trying to get inside was fouled as we go back to the last Bernard King bucket on the long feed from Darden. Now watch this jump stop with the catch. He knows exactly where he is. Jump stop right up in the air. Look at the follow through. He's still got his head watching that ball. I'll tell you, his technique inside is just good. Reggie Johnson picked up the foul for Tennessee. He has four. The first volunteer with four fouls. Roman inside. No basket on the wrist of Roman was a volunteer. I believe it was Mike Jackson. We'll wait for the official call. I think it's going to be Reggie. Uh, he, Dick, uh, he was right there. It's hard to tell. Uh, uh, his, he's a very active type player on the inside. That's number five for him, too. Reggie Johnson leaves the game with his fifth personal foul. He scored eight points. His value, as it has been all year for the Volunteers, this young freshman on the board. But he's gone and is replaced by Chuck Threats. T-H-R-E-E-T-H-S, three from Lackawanna, New York. That's always an unhappy moment. Outstanding player, lost for the rest of the game. Roman misses the free throw. That'll be the fifth game that Reggie Johnson has fouled out of, and uh, that'll make 66 personals on the year, so that's one part of his game he's gonna have to do some work on. Roman gives UCLA a 13-point lead with 10 minutes left. UCLA matching up a little bit in their zone defense now. Marcus Johnson detected reaching in. Picks up the foul for UCLA. That's his second. Oh, what a lineup again next Saturday, fans. A full play of regional college basketball here on NBC and TBS. There they are. Some dandies, some of the top teams in the country. We hope you'll be watching 4 o'clock Eastern time and 4 o'clock Western time for that Washington State UCLA match. That could be a battle for first place in the Pacific 8. All ahead next Saturday on NBC and TVS. Three. Good job. Saves it for Tennessee. So he makes his presence now. Right back. The team blocked by Roman. Spillane lost it to Hamilton. Hamilton is fouled. Runfield got it. Greg Roman has become a rather intimidating shot blocker, Billy. What's interesting there, that Roman was a little bit out of position. He happened to get there at the right time. It's kind of interesting. Good pass down court. Roy Hamilton, and look, they've tried to get a foul on Grunfeld uh, for the entire second half, and they only get it when he charges somebody other than Marcus Johnson. It is the fourth foul on Grunfeld, so the big star of Tennessee is in trouble as Roy Hamilton fires from the line. Hamilton has 21 points, just two below his all-time Bruin high. A time has been called by Ray Mears of Tennessee. With nine minutes, 40 seconds left, the Volunteers need to find 14 points. Basketball action from Atlanta, but there are some great college football stars. Ricky Bell and Ross Browner, Notre Dame. Ben Sevens from USC, the quarterback. Watching the action, the sellout crowd of nearly 17,000. Intersectional class. Roy Hamilton at the line for UCLA. The Bruins lead by 14. And Hamilton has 22 points. And now with Ernie Grunfeld having the four fouls on him, UCLA can afford to really try to put some pressure on him the next few times down the court. There's Tennessee trying to get total movement against this UCLA zone. Turnover, it went through the hands of Chuck Threat on King Speed, and UCLA will play it to the other end as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. 
Let's see who Grunfield has. Let's see who Grunfeld tries to guard. They're going to switch defense with Simon. So Grunfeld doesn't have to handle Johnson. It's going to be three Sun Johnson the rest of the way. That's Marcus Johnson inside. Can't score. Tips can't score. King feeds the lane. Almost intercepts. He had to be five feet off the floor. You've, you've mentioned so many times before about his great athletic talent, and that's uh, the kind of play he just made right there. But it's Tennessee's ball. They need a hot hand. Nine minutes left. UCLA enjoying again its biggest lead. 15. Mike Jackson gets it. 22 footer for Jackson. He now has a total of 10. Tennessee now back in his own defense. They're trying anything they can. UCLA might be able to pull the ball back out. And away traveled as he saw a little daylight and got himself in trouble. Two freshmen in the game for UCLA, Vandaway and Tim. So Dean Bartow letting his youngsters feel the heat of that. And Dick, I don't think UCLA recognized that Tennessee was in its own that time. And they may pull the ball back out, making Tennessee play man to man to keep Grunfeld under pressure. Dean Bartow checking the clock. 8.22 left. A 13-point UCLA lead. Tennessee almost has to score every time down court. UCLA matching up in their zone right now. They were playing straight 2-3 before, but now they're matching up and picking up men in area. Renfell sets up Threats, and now back outside again to Jackson. And the defense given Tennessee a lot of problems because they're not picking up what UCLA is doing very easily. Darden saves from the turnover. We're under the eight-minute mark. Super coaching job by Gene Bartow right here. Jackson, two in a row for Mike Jackson, the senior wingman, cuts UCLA's lead to 11. Vandaway hits. He's regarded as an outstanding shooter. Vandaway. He has four. Jackson inside. King to Grunfeld. Rebound, Marcus Johnson, UCLA. Almost threw it away, Hamilton. Open is the lane. Oh, UCLA, a phenomenal shooting show. Somebody's got to tell him that's not a good shot because they're hitting him. Bruins have come into Atlanta like General Sherman, and Ray Mears is trying to find a defense to stop UCLA. Seven minutes, 18 seconds left. And it's the West Coast Bruins leading Tennessee by 15. We hope you'll be with us again next Sunday, 1.30 Eastern time. Uh, Billy and I will be in Cincinnati as Marquette plays the Bearcats of Cincinnati. And Kurt Gowdy and John Wooden will be in Louisville. Providence and the Louisville Cardinals for the top teams in the country. Again, featured here on NBC. Tennessee going to half-court zone press once they want it. It's one of their best defenses. And UCLA is going to have to pull that ball out and move it around a little bit. Hamilton eluded the double team, nearly turned it over. Seven minutes exactly left in the game. Roy Hamilton's got to stay out of the corner, spread the ball out as much as they can because Tennessee plays this half-court drop extremely well. Jake Sims gets the bucket a perfect pass from Hamilton, eight points for Sims. That's the biggest lead enjoyed by UCLA today. Look at the UCLA zone, Dick, all inside the zone. Super block. Tim took it right out of three Smith. And now it's Hamilton pumping from 20. Foul. Oh, it was Vandaway on the wrist of Chuck or Bernard King as he went for the rebound. Well, you can't say enough for the UCLA bench's contribution in this game today. The young players have been extremely talented. Good pass inside. Now watch this block. Sims right there, just perfect execution of a block, and he ends up pulling the ball away, too. You know, he looks like he's kind of a sleepy kid, but he really plays with enthusiasm. Sometimes it looks like he's scared to death, but totally in control of himself. Well, I think he's made all four of his shots in the game, and although only 189 pounds, uh, shows he can handle a big man. That's Bernard King adding to his individual total. He now has 24. That's right at his average for the year. 24.9, in fact, and he's got that. 25 for King. The SEC Player of the Year, two straight years. Offensive foul on Roy Hamilton. That's twice that um, 
Tennessee has been able to get the dribbler for UCLA. This time Jackson drew the foul. Good job by Mike Jackson. Now Roy Hamilton has no need to try to force the ball up the court so quickly. The clock is definitely in UCLA's favor. They can afford to pull it back and just work it up nice and slowly. Roy staying that zone defense. Chuck Street draws the foul from Sims. He got him airborne and Sims came down on the leg of Threats. We'll go to the lines and shoot one and one. You remember Dick when Greenwood went out of the ball game, you said they had built up to a 10-point lead. Uh, they took him out, sat him down for a while over there, and I'm sure Gene Bartow would like to have him back in the game, but the way people are playing out there, he hasn't needed it. That free, free throw percentage is correct. There you see why. Inside the King. Loses it for a moment, but it goes to Grunfeld. He scores! that will awaken Tennessee. A chance for a three-pointer by the twisting, turning Grunfeld underneath. Here's a good pass inside, and you're going to see, but I think loses it, and Ernie Grunfeld is right there. Thanks for the ball, fellas. I'll take care of it myself, and there's that power of the score. Well, King has 25, and Grunfeld is shooting for 23. 87. 75, so UCLA's lead down to 12. Plenty of time, six minutes left. The lane to Johnson. Oh, oh, Marcus flying in, the assist from Spillane. That is 25 for Johnson. He needs one more hoop to be the highest scoring forward ever for UCLA. Johnny Darden's gonna have to put it up. They're leaving him wide open. He's just not taking a shot when it's available. Grunfield will, over Sims, can't hit. Marcus Johnson rebounds, knocked away by Jackson. It'll go to UCLA. Here's that last feed for Marcus Johnson. Marcus gave up the ball and then look at him, really hustled down court to get it back again in sort of a semi-give-and-go situation and how high up in the air. What a gift of player he is. But Billy, as you pointed out, the key was he got the rebound, fed it out to Splane, and then beat everyone down court. Right, and here comes that half-court zone press. Now, Sims does a smart thing, gets it opposite, Keeps the ball moving. Out of bounds, it'll go to Tennessee, although Grunfeld was the man trying to save it. The winner of 77. Oh, my. Not good news at all. And tonight at 11.30 to midnight Eastern time, <laughs> it's been the worst winner in the country and a special feature on NBC tonight. We hope you'll be joining us at 11.30 Eastern time. Randy Grunfeld wasn't sure what happened there himself. Garden's the guy that's got the shot, but he's not taking it. David Greenwood back in the game, and a foul on Grunfeld, and that'll be all for the star player, one of the many stars on the floor. Ernie Grunfeld leaves unofficially with a total of 23 points. And there's a case with a block out by Greenwood. Really wasn't there, but Grunfeld tried to come from too far a distance to get that rebound. What a competitor this young man is. Standing ovation for Grunfeld as he goes to the sidelines. That's the second volunteer to foul out. Reggie Johnson, the freshman center, also eliminated. Grenfeld, I'm glad we had a chance to see Grenfeld and uh, for the nation to see this young man who is one of the many stars on the U.S. Olympic team. And I have a feeling it'll be in March we'll see him again. Greenwood unable to connect. Marcus Johnson up with a shot. And no, travel. No foul, traveling on Johnson. He shuffled his feet. I think you have one of the supers from Tennessee on the bench. You've got the other guy still in the game, and he's the guy I look for to try to get the ball as much as possible. Tulane batted it to Hamilton. Hamilton hit from behind by Jackson, and Hamilton will go to the line. Roy down on the floor looks like he's a little hurt, but he's going to jump right back up there again. Don't forget, right after our basketball action, the INA U.S. Pro Indoor Tennis Finals, it'll be Dick Stockton against Jimmy Connors. That's for $40,000 first place money. And then Grandstand after tennis and Muhammad Ali will be with us on Grandstand. And I'm pleased uh, that I'll be doing the Ken Norton, Dwayne Bobbick fight in March for NBC. And Muhammad Ali will be my analyst. Oh, oh I won't be able to push him around like I get away with those shoving fouls on you, Pac. I'm going to get a chance to talk to him a little bit before that one. Well, here's a guy, Dick, that's had a super basketball game right here. Roy Hamilton quickly becoming one of the better guards around. 
Hamilton equals his all-time high as a Bruin, this sophomore from Bourbon Day High School. Number 10 is Bert Brittlecamp, a freshman from Knoxville. He replaces Johnny Darden for Tennessee. That's an interesting move there, Darden going to the bench. Now, I think the reason for that is Darden's been left wide open, and he hasn't been taking the shot. He's been trying to force it inside. Let's see if Fertile Camp goes with the outside shot. Hamilton's 24 points, his best ever, gives UCLA a 16-point lead. Five minutes left. Bernard King, he gets two more. 91-77. Marcus Johnson to Spillane. And clock definitely in UCLA's favor now. They don't have to take any unnecessary chance. Marcus Johnson can't connect on Greenwood's lob. It's the Fox and the Hounds now as Tennessee tries to track down the man with the ball. UCLA just keeps the ball moving. Marcus, three seconds on Johnson of UCLA. Trailing by 14, Tennessee goes to the other end. Four minutes plus left. And I'm sure Gene Bartow is trying to tell them, don't get the ball caught inside. Keep it out there and let Tennessee make the mistake. The hard thing wants that ball, Dick. Oops. He got himself airborne. Ahead to Hamilton for two more. Roy Hamilton enjoying a feast here at the Omni this afternoon. This youngster from Los Angeles. 20 seconds to lead all the Bruins. 11 field goals for Hamilton. Bernard King gets his own rebound. Can't score. Rebound, David Greenwood throws it away. Here comes King. Oh, a great feed underneath the Crosby. Just in the game, Terry Crosby. No, check it. Chuck Threech. Threech is the man with a bucket. 93-79, Hamilton to Sims. There's Sims. I tell you, he's a very calm ball player, Sims. And usually, I just have to keep that ball moving against this trap. Yeah. Sims blocked beautifully by King. Trying to go inside, and King says, oh, no, you don't. Three minutes and ten seconds left in the game. 93-79. Hamilton almost lost it. Roy doing a little bit too much dribbling out there. If they can just keep the ball moving with the pass, they can get a layup. Three minutes left. There's good playing right there. UCLA playing a smart game. Good smart play. And I'll tell you, Tennessee's going to have to go to a man-to-man -man matchup and press now because the half court is not going to get it. There's going to be too many one-on-one -on -one situations. Foul reaching in just to try to stop UCLA's keep away with 2.37 left. And that'll give us a chance to announce the Select Track 2 Most Valuable Player Scholarship Award. A $1,000 check will be sent to UCLA in the name of Roy Hamilton. With all the stars on the floor, Roy Hamilton had to be the long shot to win it, but he's been brilliant today. Timeout, UCLA with a commanding 14-point lead. Dollar check will be sent to UCLA in Roy Hamilton's name, and Roy will receive the Track 2 MVP certificate, personal symbol of his outstanding play today. And looking ahead, defending champion Johnny Miller and former titleist Arnold Palmer headline the list of top pros will be competing in the Bob Hope Desert Classic. That's coming up in just two weekends, the 12th and 13th from Palm Springs, Palm Desert, California. David Greenwood with a free throw has 21 points today. And Dick, you know this UCLA club on successive Sundays may have had two of the best games of the year by any ball club. Going to Notre Dame and winning and then coming all the way across country again and winning. Shows what kind of club they have. Another steal by UCLA. Good hands in that zone defense. And then a foul by Tennessee. And it goes against Bernard King. His third. Three fouls on King. Considering Tennessee's reputation and their big victories of especially over Alabama and Kentucky. And then to come to Atlanta, in essence, uh, with the Tennessee crowd here, almost a home game for the Volunteers. I think few expected UCLA to play this effectively against a very good Tennessee team. This is Mike Jackson with three minutes left. Can't hit it. Greenwood saves it for UCLA. The Bruins have done very little wrong. Somebody's lost a sneaker out there. I think it's Fertile Camp. Yes, he's lost his sneaker. So number 10 of Tennessee, Bertelkamp, playing without his right shoe. That's a little tough on the attraction. 
His shoe is in the backcourt, now handled by the manager of Tennessee. Two minutes left, exactly two minutes. UCLA with a 16-point lead. Foul is on Jackson for crowding Hamilton, and here comes at size 10 or 11 for Mr. Bertelkamp. Well, many have wondered just how good this UCLA team was, and I'm sure that they will pick up additional votes in the various polls for next week. The only other teams to beat Tennessee this year were the University of San Francisco, number one in the nation. They beat Tennessee by nine, and Duke beat the Volunteers by three. Hamilton looking for his 28th. Little frosting for the Bruins, 97-79. They get the ball to King. Good scoop shot, but he can't make it. Marcus Johnson battling. He gets it off to Hamilton. The other foul, whoop, foul on Hamilton. That's about all he's done wrong. He's thrown a couple of offensive fouls into the Volunteers. He looks like one of those slender halfbacks trying to knife off tackle with that play, and Tennessee will play it from underneath. For Tennessee, a defeat today will end the longest winning streak for the Volunteers in over 60 years. They had won 12 in a row in the tough Southeastern Conference, and it appears that will come to an end today. Bernard King gets two more back to make it 97-81. A minute and a half remaining. Hamilton to Greenwood. High school teammates at Urban Day High School. Loose ball and Greenwood hustling for it. He made a mistake. He tried to pass and didn't want to. Ball slipped out of his hands, and yet Greenwood still fighting to the floor to cover his mistake. He'll jump it with Brittle Kent and has uh, about a half foot advantage. Off to Sims, he'll shoot and score. I believe Sims is a perfect five for five in the game. 99 81. Inside again. The King, partially blocked by Sims, but he fouled him in the process. This is the Omni. It seats nearly 17,000. It was sold out today. And this will be the same when NBC presents the NCAA tournament late in March. It'll be the 26th and 28th, Saturday and Monday. The best in the country to battle for that coveted NCAA championship. And as we said at the top of the show, there's no reason, even though Tennessee has not played as well as it would like, that we might well see these two teams again. They are so many good clubs, so many, to repeat a statement made by everyone around college basketball all year long. Greenwood in the backcourt with a minute left in the game. Spillane is trying to kill the second. And a foul reaching in. I believe Jackson of Tennessee will wait for the... It is. And it's, that is 5,000 Jackson. So Tennessee's problems include five fouls on three different starters. Mike Jackson goes out, joining center Reggie Johnson and forward Ernie Grunfeld. So three top players lost on fouls. Grunfeld with a little consolation for Jackson, who leaves with 15 points. UCLA trying to hit the century mark against Tennessee. The Bruins have been over 99, 100 points three times this year. This is their fourth. The lane looking for his sixth point as Brett Roman returns to the UCLA lineup. Replaces Marcus Johnson. And even the Tennessee fans offer Johnson a well-deserved hand. He leaves with 25, so in his next game, he'll pass Sidney Wicks and be the all-time UCLA forward. Bertle Camp hits his first shot, makes it 101-85. 40 seconds left. Belain picks up the reach-in foul on Bertle Camp, and that'll send the clever little guard from Southern California to the line. Belain from Palos Verdes Estates. His stepfather is Johnny Arndt, who is the former head basketball coach at Loyola in Los Angeles. King with a rebound. Ahead to Crosby. 
Crosby can't hit. Turtle can. Follows it in. Good play by the freshman from Knoxville. 27 seconds left. The lane. Trying to kill the clock. 187. Another foul. This time on Darden back in for Tennessee. His first foul. Next Saturday, a full list of outstanding regional action on NBC and CBS. And we have two games. Some of you will see one, others around the country the other, but they're both outstanding games. Marquette will be at Cincinnati, and Providence visits Louisville. That'll be next Sunday, 1.30 Eastern Time. Hamilton has 30 points today. Our most valuable player, Roy Hamilton. Big tennis action coming up on NBC as Crosby hits his first hoop with 14 seconds left. Elaine hits the side of the board and Sims made a good play to come up with it. Two seconds, one, and there it is, the end of the game on the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia. The final score, UCLA beats Tennessee 103. 289. Dick Enberg with Billy Packer from Atlanta, Georgia.